Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jassim Azawi. Three years ago, Al-Qaeda was a lethal force in Iraq. Today, it is in full retreat. Its leaders are either killed or behind bars. And yet, no one should rush to sign its death certificate. The current political deadlock may supply Al-Qaeda with enough oxygen to reorganize and find new recruits. Beleaguered members of Al-Sahwa councils may reverse their anti-Qaeda policy if Iraqi security forces do not stop their campaign of arrest. While it's true, Al-Qaeda has lost the support of tribal leaders and disenfranchised groups. The terror organization may come back with a vengeance when all U.S. combat operations cease at the end of August. What will happen then? Will we see the dark days of 2006 again? To discuss Al-Qaeda's chances of survival in Iraq, I'm joined from Tel Aviv by Ranan Gisin, a former senior advisor to former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, and from London by Abdelbari Atwan, the editor-in-chief of Al-Quds al-Arabi. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. Abdelbari Atwan, you are considered an expert on Al-Qaeda. You have written a book about the organization. You interviewed Osama bin Laden. You went to the caves of Afghanistan. You write constantly about Al-Qaeda, and you have followed the rise and fall of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Is the terror organization dead in, in Iraq, or is it still a lethal force? Well, actually, before we discuss that, we have to dig deeper and look at uh, the situation from different angle. The most important questions, who brought Al-Qaeda to Iraq? We know during Saddam Hussein regime, Al-Qaeda non-existence. I believe Al-Qaeda and its leader, Osama bin Laden, are extremely grateful to the Israeli and the friends, the, new, the American new conservative, who actually create the best atmosphere for Al-Qaeda to actually come to Iraq and to start its campaign. It is actually, uh, you know, bombing and killing in Iraq, whether against uh, American, American troops or Iraqi people. So I think Al-Qaeda very, very happy that the American created a failed state for them and actually uh, created a sectarian division among the Iraqi themselves, divided Iraq between Sunni and Shia. And this is the best environment for Al-Qaeda to actually expand and to flourish and uh, to, uh, to, to be an extremely important figure in the Iraqi politics. Whether Al-Qaeda is dead or alive in Iraq, I believe Al-Qaeda is still in Iraq, and I believe it will emer emerge again. It is true it's not strong as it used to be in 2006, 2007, uh, but we know that Al-Qaeda is supposed to be finished completely in Afghanistan after the bombing of uh, uh, um, Tora Bora yes. and uh, Kandahar and Kabul in, 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 in 2001. And look at the situation now. Al-Qaeda Al is stronger and Taliban is stronger. Ranang is seen the man so, does not miss his word. He is going for the jugular. He immediately went with an accusing finger. The Israelis and the neocons are behind <laughs> all this. Yeah, well, you brought it into Iraq. Well, thank you. Right. First, first of all, thank you. Uh, I want to thank Abdul Barry for this credit, uh, crediting Israel with being uh, the mastermind behind all events in the world, pulling all the strings. I, well, we don't have that power and that strength. Look, Al Qaeda is really a byproduct of, uh, I would say, internal divisions in the Arab world, in the Muslim world. Al Qaeda succeeds and strive in places like Iraq, like Afghanistan and Pakistan, where there's a civil strife, where there's a, a, a people who are disaffected and disillusioned, and Al Qaeda is able to recruit them and gain their support. Uh, if it's a fight between Sunni and Shiites, or if it's a fight between tribes in Pakistan and Afghanistan, Al Qaeda makes its headways. Al Qaeda also makes its headways in places where there's no central regime or central government that it's able to impose its, its, its rule on the countryside and on places where there is tribal strife. For example, in Africa, in Somalia, in Nigeria. Uh, look what happened in Uganda today. Yeah, countries where there's no central regime, where the, the, the I would say that the, 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 the uh, original Gibson. purpose, the strategic goal of Al-Qaeda to, uh, no, to attack the West is not succeeding. Right, to, right now, Al-Qaeda is a major threat towards Arab regimes, not towards the West. No, this is, this is completely misleading, Mr. Gissin. You know, Al-Qaeda was not at all in Iraq. Uh, Iraq was a stable country. I Iraq used to have, you know, institutions, used to have army, used to have power. It was, you know, a, 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 the most secular country in the whole of the Middle East. 
who spoiled all this? The new conservative, most of them are Israeli allies, and they decided to destroy this country and to give uh, or to send invitation for Al Qaeda to set up bases there. So we cannot say it, Iraq it now is a failed state simply because of the American intervention, because of the Israeli intervention, and Iraq and Afghanistan also now is stronger because of the American mistakes, because of the Israeli mistakes. That's that's the reality in our part of the world. We cannot say. Uh, Al-Qaeda is there simply because of division. Who created these divisions in the Arab world? Who created the atmosphere for Al-Qaeda and other organizations to, to actually expand and to emerge? It is the Israeli-American alliance which destroyed the whole of the Middle East and now actually creating a huge instability all over the world. If actually they treated the situation in, 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 in a more actually strategic way and if they didn't destroy Iraq the way we have seen, we wouldn't have Al-Qaeda there. You know, and also also, look at Afghanistan, as I said. In 2001, Al-Qaeda is supposed to be rooted out. But who sent them the invitation to go to Iraq? It is the American invasion. It is the Israeli incitements against the Muslims, against the Arabs, against uh, you know, a secular regime in Iraq. So we are paying a price for Israeli Give conspiracy. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. American go ahead, Ranan. Listening to this conspiracy. Yes, but... Look, I, I, I don't buy this. This is a far-fetched conspiracy theory. The, the American alliance with Israel is what is causing all the trouble in the world. By the way, the Israeli-American alliance is providing more solutions, potential solutions to the Middle East than the problems. But let's leave that aside for a minute because I think we're talking about 1,400-year-old conflict Before you go into Suna the 1,400, Ranan and, Gisin, and, but let and, me stop and, and, and you. Are Al-Qaeda you saying, into are you, say, are you absolving yourself it. and the Israeli contribution to the war of 2003 against Iraq? Are you saying that Israel, Zionism, and the neoconservatism, they did not have any, any play in the invasion of Iraq? Is that what you are saying? We were the victims of continuous attacks and continuous threats from Saddam Hussein. And we sat quietly during that You did that not war, answer the, the question, way. Ranan Gisin. You did American not answer the question. Decided... My question to you, uh, is Israel saying, and you are saying you were a former senior political military advisor to Ariel Sharon, are you saying that you were against the American invasion of Iraq, or did you actually support it? Because I remember at the time, Iraq is a lethal and no. gathering <laughs> danger to the entire Middle East, especially the Israel. Yeah, uh, are you? Are you say are you denying your responsibility but, uh, <laughs> no 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 I'm not, I'm not denying my response not, not, not my, I take responsibility for my action this was an American action which was led and instigated and by you the fact egg that them Iran on. you egg them uh, on all the time aggressive you spurred them on all the Kuwait. time let's do it let's that. do it let's, you forgot let's, let's that. Get, get, kill this and guy let's, the let's get him because of his WMD the rest of the world you edged them on, you egged them on, you spurred them on. Uh, I remember you, I remember you, uh, Ran well, Gisin, uh, when he said Saddam you, is the most don't, dangerous don't, man in, don't forget, in the world. Well, let, let's get him, let's get this guy before he well, peaks. Well, he tried to build... <laughs> well, we did take some... We did take some action in 1981 to destroy the nuclear reactor there. Okay, and there's a reason. He was about to develop a, a nuclear nuclear weapons. There are certain actions and which in the have process you introduce in that and in the process and, you introduce Al Qaeda into Iraq. But, uh, but Abdul Bari Atwan Ranan said something uh, very that's, very telling. That's, something very uh, very important. That's but too let me recap this it. And he really, said. Al-Qaeda no, thrives when there is, when <laughs> there is sectarianism. I wish we had that influence on Al-Qaeda, but we don't. <laughs> Let me compliment you, Ranan Gesin. I'm quoting you directly in this show. Hold on just a second. Yeah. He said, Al-Qaeda thrives whenever there is sectarianism and when there is the division. And that's exactly what happened after 2003. Iraq, for 75 years, was a, a secular, almost a liberal country. People did not know the ethnicity oh, of their neighbors. Oh, and suddenly, yeah. 2003... Under the rule of Saddam Hussein, rather liberal country. <laughs> lib Executions lib and... Liberal and suppression in relative of human terms, rights and civil liberties, terms, come on. <laughs> Ranan Gisin, in relative terms, we are talking about Sunni Shia things. Right now, Al-Qaeda th thrived on that one. So, right now, there's a political deadlock. There's an impasse between several parties who uh, no, uh, fought this election in 2003. Hold on, Ran Angesin. Now, Al-Qaeda has a, a good chance of coming back again. You know, uh, Jassim, all, uh, I would like to remind you. Hold on, hold on. Al-Qaeda comes. Al-Qaeda. Just... Uh, 
Hold on, right please ask hold him on. to listen Ra to understand the other people. This is the problem of the Israeli. They took my land. Now they, are un they want to take my tan also. It's, it's unbelievable. Let me speak, please. You know, let us let us go back to to uh, the invasion or the beginning of the Ira American invasion to Iraq. Who created the, 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 the sectarian division in Iraq? Who actually applied the sectarian rules in Iraq? It is the American. You remember Bremer. He started the governing, the governing council of Iraq. How he divided the seat there. How he distributed the seat. It is according to sectarian uh, criteria. It is not according to actually, you know, uh, uh, secular or um, democratic means or ways like that. So they actually sow the seeds of, 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 of sectarian sectarianism of, of in, in, in Iraq and we are paying a very heavy price of, for this in the whole of the Middle East and the whole of the of the whole world other points I would like to refer to I would like to remind Mr. Giesen that Petraeus who is not Arabs who is not a Palestinian who is not a Muslim when he said that the Israeli policies in the Middle East in the West Bank in Gaza actually endangering the lives of the American and European and NATO soldiers in Afghanistan you know he me what he means by that he said Israel is the source of all trouble in our part of the world even creating a troubles to their allies in the West, especially in the United States. So, we, yes, we are blaming Answer that the Israelis. One, Ranan, the Americans are, are blaming the Israelis now. Answer yeah, that I, one, Ranan. I think this goes too far. Listen, the worst thing that, that, that a conspiracy theory is denying history. I mean, you know the history of your country. You know the sectarian strike that existed for 1400 years. I know the history of my country years. very well, you know Ranan, because, because but he did not answer but Abdel Bari did when not he rise said, because David Petrios, David Petrios, the new commander in Afghanistan, in the is holding Israel directly for the responsibility for the lives of American soldiers ah, okay. and interest in the region. Are you are you saying he's lying? Yeah. Are you saying ah. he's lying? Okay. Go ahead. No. Are you saying he's lying? Yes. No, no, no. No, this is no, no. I'm saying it's a politically motivated statement that has to do with other things, not with what Israel. Israel does not have that strength. Israel does not influence what's happening in Afghanistan, not in Pakistan, and other places. Al Qaeda is a byproduct of the rise of fundamental Islam in the Arab world. It was created in the madrasas of, of uh, Saudi Arabia, and from there it started. Now it's directing its wrath against those regimes. Not and Israel has what? nothing to and do guess with what? it. Israel is. It is coming to your, it's your coming to your house. It's coming to your door. Al Qaeda right now. There are some reports that it's in Gaza. But in Gaza. it's failing. It's those, failing those there. Who, those who no, saw the no. wind. In Gaza, it's succeeding the because it has the support. Those who, saw, those, who, those who no, saw no, the wind, no, come on. They, uh, they, they reap the whirlwind. You brought it on yourself. Let's let's look at the facts first of all. In Gaza, they're succeeding because there's a Hamas uh, leadership there and a Hamas organization which uh, sees its alliance with them and allowing them to operate with some limitations. In the West Bank, by the way, they are not succeeding because the Palestinian Authority is fighting against them, Israel is fighting against them, and other countries as well. Now, why aren't they succeeding in the West in general? Why is all their, their uh, destruction and violence directed against Muslim countries, against the Dar al-Islam, not against us? I mean, how could you say that we are the ones who have brought about, uh, about uh, Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda is like a genie that came out of the bottle. And Arab countries who supported Al-Qaeda, because for various reasons, their own personal interests, they thought they could who's fight against Al-Qaeda. Who's supporting Al-Qaeda? Which Arab country is supporting Al-Qaeda? They now yeah. don't yeah. know how to control it. Yeah. Yeah, Jasim, Jasim, please Can't let you? me answer, yeah. Mr. Gissin. Go ahead. You know, Ali, so Ali, I, Ali. Arab okay. I am. I'm really surprised. Yeah. Somebody in his intellect, you know, saying that the Arab countries, Arab governments are supporting Al Qaeda. Nobody is supporting Al Qaeda. The only, the only people who are supporting Al Qaeda, the Israeli and the new conservative indirectly by creating the atmosphere for Al Qaeda. Let me let me give you an example. When Al-Qaeda was uh, in Afghanistan before 2001, there was only one address of Al-Qaeda, which is Tora Bora uh, Mountains there. Now, how many addresses of Al-Qaeda do we have after the Americans uh, accomplished their mission there, according to President Bush? You know, we have Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, which is coming back strongly. We have Al-Qaeda now in, Af in, in, in Somalia, which is very strong. We have Al-Qaeda in North Africa. We have Al-Qaeda in, in Iraq. Pakistan, we in have Al-Qaeda in, in Saudi Arabia. In Nigeria. We have Al-Qaeda. Listen, just listen. Listen to me. Listen, let me finish. 
There is Al Qaeda in Yemen now. So who actually make Al Qaeda a lethal power? It is the American stupidity because they relied on the new conservative who are actually most of them, most of them Israeli supporters. They real, they. Uh, they actually dependent. They were dependent on the Israeli so-called expert in terrorism. So that's the problem. You know, the Israeli actually uh, <laughs> make the American pay a very heavy price for their advices. One for of those so experts so was Ranan Gisin. Let us on, listen on, to on, this on Israeli expert. No. Go ahead, Ranan. Now, you know, you got a new president. President Obama carried a very reconciliatory speech towards the Arab Muslim world, offering them to start, to start a new page. Did that change the behavior of Al-Qaeda any place in the world or the country? They're continuing. Now, this is not something that has to do with Israel. I mean, this conspiracy theory has no basis whatsoever. I mean, the, the after Israel, what? Does Israel after wants what? peace in the region. Israel after does not what? Want the question is, after what? After the destruction of Iraq, as we say in this part of the world, after the destruction of Basra, the entire Who? country <laughs> is in ruins. After <laughs> what? The destruction of Iraq did not come about because of Israel or because of the United States. It came about because of a leader called Saddam Hussein. He brought the destruction. The destruction in other Muslim countries comes about because Al Qaeda can operate there without uh, without any any uh, strings attached, without any anyone to stop it. In places where Al Qaeda let is us go to the current the situation, Abdel Bari In places where the regime doesn't yeah, have yeah, the strength to do that, ask him, then in those places Al Qaeda thrives. Okay, let's go to the current situation. Please. Please, Atwan, and, that listen, is, please. and that is, we witnessed the rise and fall of Al-Qaeda in Iraq from 2003 until about, just about last year. And right now, one, one of the reasons that Al-Qaeda was, had such a drubbing and was ob obliterated because of the Asahwa councils, they turned Al-Qaeda, the tribal elders in Ambar and in, in Baghdad and other places, they pretty no. much, they said, okay. this is a terror organization, this is unlike Iraqis. With the current situation, with right. the current impasse, with the current deadlock, with the current fighting over the over the the chair of the prime minister, there is there is a chance, there is a likelihood that Al Qaeda will find a certain pathway and certain divisions to come back. Will the Iraqis ever commit the same mistake of allowing this terror organization to have foothold again in Iraq? I believe yes. I think the question is yes. Why? Uh, I was listening to uh, Ayad Alawi, the previous prime minister of Iraq, when he said that the amount of death now committed by the uh, current, current uh, government in Iraq is more than uh, the, the same death which committed by Saddam Hussein. I would like to refer you to the demonstration which took place on Basra. Uh, and Halla and other and Nasriya, other other um, parts of Iraq, demonstration for electricity. After eight years of the American occupation of Iraq, the Iraqi until now are, are asking for electricity, for water, for medicine, for education, for safety, for security. That's that's the, that's the atmosphere where Al Qaeda can come back and establish its spaces again. The frustration of Iraqi people, the, the, the disabilities of the ruling class in Iraq, those people who were imported by the American forces to rule Iraq after Saddam Hussein. So the atmosphere is there, is extremely ripe for Al-Qaeda to come back stronger than it used to be. The awakening uh, groups, as Sahwa groups, collapsed completely because the, you know, the, the, they, they did their job. On, on, the, on behalf of the American, on behalf of the ruling uh, elites in Iraq. And what happened? The situation is extremely bad. The reconciliation is still far away. The, 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 these elite actually could not agree among themselves. All of them are American supporter, American agent, actually, all of them. They cannot agree to, to set up a government to, to, to rule the country. They cannot brought electricity to people. Iraq got well, two Rana, rivers, you're shaking and they your don't head. have what water are you for people. With? Go ahead, so this is, this is, this is uh, the American, this is the American, the American uh, promise uh, to the Iraqi. This is the American promise that Iraq will be, uh, you know, uh, a Bari. model of stability, uh, model Bari. of prosperity, model of, of safety, this, Mr. Mr. Of Give him a chance. And Give him a chance. Is, you know, Give him a chance to American, answer. Go ahead, Ranan. With the advice Mr. of the Israelis Mr. Abdul Bari. Mr.
Mr. Abdul Bari, with all due respect about the involvement of America and the involvement of Israel, you can't deny your own history. You know, you you are a student of your own history. You know the origins, the roots of things. The sectarian strife inside Iraq is 1,400 years old. Uh, The Arab-Israeli conflict is about 140 years old. I mean, there are things, there are processes that are taking place in the Middle East that happen without the involvement of Israel. Israel cannot influence them. Israel can only try to stay on top of these tsunami waves. That's all we're trying to do to survive in this threat. We did not create it. The Iran-Iraq war, we did not get the, my, my, Soon you're going to say that we started the Iran-Iraq war as well. No, I he's mean, not, he's not going to do that. that but he's going States, to do, he's going to, control in the Middle East. He's not going to do that, but he's going to answer my question. And here is a, a question, Abdul Bari, to you. February 5th, 2003, yes. Colin Powell, Secretary of State, is addressing the Security Council on the eve of the war. And he mentioned that Al-Qaeda is in Iraq. Was he lying to the council? Was he misinformed? Was he deliberately using a subterfuge when he was referring to Ansar al-Islam, a very small group located in a very small enclave at the border of Iraq, Iran, and Turkey, and saying Al-Qaeda is in Iraq? Was he lying? Was he misinformed? Or was he basically trying to pull the hoodwink on the Security Council? He was misinformed, and he was lying at the same time because Saddam Hussein is a secular leader. He never allowed Islamists um, or radicals like Al-Qaeda to set up bases a in bloody Iraq. secular he leader. He was uh, <laughs> you know, against all type, all type of, of, of sectarianism. And we can prove it, 36 of the, those people who were arrested, uh, 36 out of 52 of those officials who were arrested by the American were actually Shia. So the man was not sectarian at all. He didn't believe in sectarianism, and he was a secular, and actually he never allowed Islamists to, to, uh, to flourish in Iraq. It is, it is documented. And a Muslim Brotherhood could not exist in Iraq simply because Saddam Hussein will never let them so. And if they did appear, you know, he immediately will arrest them and prosecute them like others. So we cannot say that, you know, Saddam, the, the Al-Qaeda I was in Iraq before, left to me before the invasion of, 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 of uh, the American invasion. I have so it one... is lies, pure lies, or to find excuses to, to destroy this country and to stro- destroy the whole of the Middle East and to create imbalance in, 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 on, yes. in that part of the world. I have one minute left to me, Ranan Gesin. I'll ask you a question and then I go back to Abdel Bari Atwan. Here's the question. Are you denying, are you absolving the role of I'm Israel sorry. in the introduction of Al-Qaeda into Iraq? Yes, I'm denying because... No, no. I can take responsibility for my action when I defend my country when I do. I can't take responsibility for all the things that happen in the Middle East, and it's not. And I think the Iraqis themselves have a responsibility to reconcile them. The Iraqis themselves, the Iraqis, Afghanistan, Pakistan people must understand that Al-Qaeda is an enemy of civilized society. It's an enemy of Israel. It's an enemy of civilized society. It's an enemy of Abdul Bari. And that's the way that we should deal with it. If we join forces, then we can rid ourselves of this uh, phenomenon. Here is the last comment from Abdel Bari Atwan. Go ahead, make it short and make it sweet. Uh, I believe Al Qaeda will come back to Iraq, and also, uh, you know, Iraq is drifting toward anarchy, toward chaos. And this could produce more radical organization than Al-Qaeda itself. It is the American mistake. It is the Israeli mistakes. They thought that they could have an easy ride in Iraq. They can actually set up a regime which will help them or uh, carry out their policies in that part of the world. The outcome was disastrous, disastrous to Iraq, to Iraqi people. Until now, a million people were killed. We have more than a million and a half widows because of the American-Israeli stupidity. We have more than four million orphans, about five million displaced people. This is the outcome of the American-Israeli crimes in Iraq. Gentlemen, I just have to ask you to come back again very shortly. (laughs) Abdul Bari Atwan, Ranan Gisin. Gentlemen, thank Thank you you. for being guests on Inside Iraq. To watch the show online, please visit our website aljazeera.net forward slash English. We have reached the end of this show. Join me next week when we take another look inside Iraq. Until then, this is Jassim Azawi wishing you a fantastic week.